So uh, thank you for having me and thank you for staying. Um, so yes, I uh, did my PhD in the late 90s working for the Ministry of Transportation in France, uh, working mainly in uh, the analysis of images for safety studies. And then I moved on here, coming in Ireland, on EU project working as a research fellow uh, on multimedia indexing and retrieval and video restoration. So I have worked on different topics that involve mainly visual data, and uh, the slide I'm going to present today is uh, mainly a reflection of some of the things that I have done as part of my team, uh, which is about 10 people at the moment, but some of the work presented is also coming from uh, past members of the team. Okay, so that's an example of application that I worked on. So you may remember the Xbox coming out circa 2010 and associated with it was the Kinect camera, which was a very interesting camera because it was very cheap, but not only it was recording color images, but also deaths information, so how far the object was from the camera, basically. So it was giving uh, an opportunity there to actually construct a 3D scanner for cheap. Uh, in other words, we could bridge the gap in between um, uh, data acquisition, 3D reconstruction, and then going forwards towards 3D printing, for instance, or creating uh, 3D content for a game or for the film industry. Another application that I work on was um, um, color, changing colors in movies. So colors is very important to transfer the mood or the feeling of the storyline in a movie. So it's uh, something that is very much used and there is still research uh, very active in the field. And here, when you work in the post-processing industry, you need to provide a way for the artist to interact with the media. Okay, you cannot let the AI to do all the work. The, the artists they still want to have some form of control. Okay, so there it comes the problem of deep learning and artificial intelligence as we know it, is how can we control it to have the effect that the artists want. Okay, so moving away from um, those little uh, uh, example, here this is a footage from um, drone capture that was done in 2017 in collaboration with uh, Intel Movidius over Trinity College in 2017. So this is an example of data that can be used to reconstruct a 3D model of a full campus here as an example. You have a voxel representation in 3D here. So again, why voxel versus a 3D mesh? Voxel is very easy for a manipulation with convolutional neural network, for instance. Again, for artificial intelligence, being able to segment the buildings and to put label or semantic label onto it. So this links to one of my main topics uh, recently, which is about creating a 3D semantic map. Okay, it's very important in the context of autonomous driving and maybe autonomous drone and having uh, uh, autonomous deliveries going to the hands of people and therefore to have an up-to-date 3D map with information associated with it is going to be very important. Okay, uh, so this is an example that was done in 2017 to drive a drone uh, uh, over an area actually require um, that you be careful that there is no one below that can, you know, in case there is an accident. So that was done at 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning uh, or 6 a.m., so very early. And this is, you know, in practice here we were supported by Intel, but that can be quite expensive to grab data uh, with a drone. Okay. The second thing is that it was done in 2017, and you may know that since Trinity College has knocked down a few buildings and built new ones. So the map that we have is actually out of date already. Okay? So the main problem for autonomous driving will be to have access to a very informative map, but also that is up to date. So how can we do that? So uh, the sort of research that I'm trying to do is to see if there is multiple sources of information that we can use to have this up-to-date 3D map with information of value. 
So here, this is an example from an EU project that I coordinated. Um, the Great Search projects, in that project, we were mainly interested in looking at social media data. So you're familiar with Twitter, Twitter, people tweet, some text is associated with the tweet, some GPS information is associated with the tweet, you have sometimes an image associated with the tweet, a timestamp, and so on, okay? So what we did was we wanted to know what sort of information can we visualize the activities that there is on Twitter. And for this visualization, we chose other source of data to construct a 3D model of the city. We use OpenStreetMap, which is the equivalent of Google Map, um, but this is for free and it is filled in by um, um, uh, volunteers, if you like, so GIS information, combined with Google Street View data, um, and so we reconstruct for cheap a 3D modeling of different cities. So here you have example of Dublin, Pittsburgh, and Rome. And the flashlight represents a tweet where there is an image that has been taken. And we recognize from the image content where the image was taken. And from the text analysis, we have also an idea of the sentiment associated with the tweet, if it is a sad tweet or if it is a happy tweet, okay? And this is encoded uh, as part of the color information of the flashlight. Blue is sad and yellow is a little bit happier. So you may imagine that what we recover in terms of information from Twitter was mainly the touristic landmarks that we, you know, we are familiar with in, uh, in big cities. Right? But sometimes we discover new things that the tourist information center would not know. So for instance, in Dublin, we discover uh, um, a little painting that appears on the wall in Temple Bar overnight, um, and people were reacting to it. Okay? Um, so that's the sort of activity we were uh, looking into. Can we get value out of information that is posted on Twitter? Okay. Can he help you to tell you where to go uh, when you land in a city uh, and you don't know what's going on in that city? Okay, so again, coming back to those 3D semantic map, you may know about autonomous driving a little bit, and uh, we cannot get data to train uh, cars. Uh, because some scenario would be very, very dangerous if you were, if you were trying to uh, get them done in uh, uh, real life. So the question is, can we create virtual environment where we can actually train robots to navigate in this virtual environment? So I have presented a way for creating a 3D city that is a, a digital twin, if you like, from real cities. We can also use Twitter to actually see activities of pedestrian. Okay, so if people tweet several times during the day, it gives us some sparse information about the trajectory of these people. So this is what we used here. We used different, um, uh, different um, um, uh, information coming from Twitter. If people were tweeting several times during the day, then we could reconstruct trajectories. And we also use information from the image themselves, people that are appearing in the photograph. Okay. Um, so the idea there was to, for cheap, again, to try to grasp some information about the pattern of displacement of people in a real environment, such that you would help to create an environment for robots to use to navigate with humans. Okay. Okay, so here, this is an example of another project. So again, I'm very interested in geolocation. And here, that was about geolocation of telegraphic poles. So we were contacted by Air, uh, who was interested in having an inventory being done uh, using artificial intelligence and neural network um, um, with a source of data coming from Google Street View. Okay? So this goes a little bit beyond detection of an object in an image. We actually do want to have the GPS location of that object in the real world. Okay, so the pipeline we actually introduced there was having three modules. One was detecting the object in the image, neural network, deep learning, CNN. The second was about an estimation of how far the object was from the Google Street View camera. Okay, again, a neural network, CNN. And then there were fusion modules to actually infer all the GPS coordinates of the detected objects, because we don't want to have duplicate in our inventory. 
Okay? So we have multiple images looking at the same poll. The Google Street View are actually 360 views, and they are collected every 5 meters or every 10 meters. And therefore, if you don't pay attention, then you can have duplicate in your data set. Um, so the fusion model was using a standard statistical technique called the Markov random field. So again, the data scientist in that context is using different tools depending on exactly what you want, and neural network cannot solve everything. So we had to reverse back to some uh, statistical technique for the fusion of information. And again, this work was continued on by um, a Marie Curie Fellowship um, uh, supported by the ADAPT Center, and it is continuing now as we try to commercialize the technology for doing um, other type of inventory for uh, companies. Okay, so one of the latest work is actually, uh, this is a paper published this year in my team, um, that was using a combination of IIL imagery uh, with social media data. So you know that people react, if there is flood in their street, they are going to react. And the question that was asked as part of a competition uh, was, can you assess how passable the road is? You know, can you drive through the water or not? Okay, um, and that was a sort of fusion of information. Again, every image source is analyzed by um, modules that are based on artificial intelligence, and then you have a fusion module that is going to decide this is the passable road, yes and no. Um, so this is the type of information um, or competition that are very important because we are supposed to be subject more and more to those sort of uh, extreme events uh, um, like flooding. Uh, and that will have an impact on our transportation and all services. Um, so currently we are working with Ordnance Survey Ireland, uh, working on IIL imagery and deploying some AI as well uh, to have an idea uh, of... Uh, um, what's going on on the ground and where things are, and again, the importance of having very accurate and up-to-date information uh, um, is very important in that context. Okay, so this is the latest uh, program that I am uh, involved with. This is an H2020 project called Bonsai. Uh, so we are reaching the end. It's supposed to end in January 2020. And the purpose there was to develop a marketplace for uh, providing access to uh, small to medium-sized company access to AI, but AI on the edge. So you know that neural network is very well accessible now uh, with you know, beautiful libraries optimized for GPUs. But you don't have that much to actually push the AI onto the edge where you have processes that are a little bit different and also that don't have the same uh, uh, memory uh, uh, and compute, compute power. So the purpose of Bonsai is actually to develop a marketplace where people uh, sell and can buy uh, different artifacts. So this is a combination of uh, sharing data, a combination of having access to a particular model, having access to a particular implementation for a particular hardware, uh, as well as having access to uh, the parameters controlling the model. Okay? So the focus here is really pushing the neural network working on the edge and making it easier for deployment for mobile phone or Raspberry Pi or whatever uh, uh, hardware you're using. Okay, so uh, I have managed to have slide without one equations. There were only s slides with images, but if you're interested in the equations, there is publication associated with this work. Okay, uh, different event that I am involved with in Ireland. So the Irish Machine Vision is happening every year. This is where the PhD students are presenting their work. Uh, so if you want to network, it's a good uh, place to go. And we are trying to bring uh, the European Signal Processing Conference in 2021 in Dublin as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rosanne. I'm interested in the uh, Bonsai's project and the AI marketplace. And yeah. You said it's coming to an end soon. Or sh yeah. How's the um, engagement fr from the community in that? Cause the, the engagement is very good. We're yeah. trying to, uh, to get you know, a follow-up uh, momentum. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there is two websites. There is Bonsai.eu, which is associated with the EU project. Mm -hmm. And there is Bonsai.com, which is you know, supposed to actually bring the yeah. platform for uh, consumers to use. Yeah, yeah. Very good. All mm -hmm. right. I'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah. So Thanks, Rosianne. Very Thank good. Thank you. So